Hey, what's up? It's Kevin Rogers. Welcome to Copy Chief Radio, brought to you by CopyChief.com. See how that works. Let's get into it. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Copy Chief Radio. It's Kevin Rogers here. My guest today is Ryan McGrath. He is a copy chief over at Agora Financial. You know, Agora Financial, of course, is the, what is it, Ryan, $400 million? Hopefully next year, it's $300 million. $300 <laughs> million. Okay, well, never mind. Then it's nothing, really. <laughs> <laughs> the machine over there at, at, in all of Agora Publishing, Ryan, this I'm excited about the new book you've just written, The Ferocious Copywriter Manifesto. And this is based on uh, all the teachings that you've been giving copywriters over there at AF for years. The new writers that come in, some that you've taken under your wing personally. You talked about a good half dozen writers that you've taken well beyond you know a million dollars in revenue at AF. So I'm really excited that you decided to put these in a book and share them with everybody. Yeah, yeah. Cool, man. So you know what I love? The kind of theme of the book is going, you know, if you're at the B level now, getting to the A level. So one question is like, how does somebody know? I think if they could read your book and quickly know the difference between the two, but what does it mean to be at the B level? I think the B level, I mean, it's, everyone starts there. So there's nothing wrong with being B level. I began a B level, just about every top copywriter has to start somewhere. The biggest thing I think that makes someone B level is just the limitations they set for themselves and they try to play it safe and they try to follow the quote unquote rules. And that's really can be extremely dangerous for a long term career because, as I see, there's a couple of myths that could perpetuate it in, in co- writing copy that hold people back. One of them being that because direct response measures the past, it actually gives you the ability to predict the future. Mm-hmm. So, therefore, copywriting is safe. And I can tell you, having written dozens and dozens of total bombs, that's not true. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, go, go in a little bit more into that. So what do you mean? Yeah, by- I mean, it's, it's risk taking, right? I mean, you have to take a risk. Yeah. And like what I really mean by like being a ferocious copywriter is really about like state control. It's both controlling the state of your prospect with their copy, but also yourself and not holding yourself back and restricting yourself to what's been done in the past. Eugene Schwartz has a great book called Breakthrough Copywriting. And that's a breakthrough advertising. And that's really what he's talking about is breakthroughs. And he wrote that in the 1960s and it, it continues today. And like people are still innovating breakthroughs. And that really should be our goal, trying to break through as opposed to just trying to, to copy the past. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a good one. You know, I always talk about some of the best advice I got early in my copywriting career was from Gary Bensavanga, who mm-hmm. kindly responded to uh, an email I sent him, which, which shocked me. And uh, the advice he gave me was, you know, yes, study controls, yes, hand copy ads, but the important thing is to always be asking yourself, what's one thing I might change about this that would make it convert even better? Mm -hmm. And I I came to learn over the years that it's that thing we bring to it that nobody else could. Like, how does this look through through our, our unique filter, right? And developing that ability to recognize extraordinary ideas these are the kinds of things that you guys hammer into young copywriters and teach at Agora Financial. There's a chapter in the book about ferocious ideas. Let's talk about big ideas because when I think it'd be interesting for listeners who don't understand what it's like yeah. to come in as a new copywriter at AF. They go through how, how long is a copy school now? It is nine weeks. Yeah, n- nine weeks. So imagine this: if you, you know, this is like the dream you know, working with the best of the best being flown in, you move to Baltimore, just like Ryan did, just like all the writers do. And you get to learn from them, everything they know. But at the same time, you're, you're doing, you're starting right away. You're that you're encouraged to pitch ideas, even in those early stages. Correct, Ryan? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's another myth that holds people back is that copywriting is about words. Mm. It's about writing words. It is not really about that at all. <laughs> Um, we kind of frame writing copy now as uh, sales alchemy, mm-hmm. which I got that idea from Caleb O'Dowd, O'Dowd, who actually got that from Gary Halbert. But really, it's not about words at all. It's about unique ideas and a unique expression of ideas. Right. And, you know, it's the unique ideas that 
create new possibilities and opportunities to our in our prospects' minds. You know, I mean, those are, that's the the possibilities that are going to compel them to to buy your offer. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, really, what we're selling is emotions and decisions. We're not really. It's nothing to do with the words on paper. In fact, like that's another mistake I see people make is they try to like emulate another copywriter's voice and try to have like a distinctive voice when really like you should write a simplistic English language as you possibly can. Like, and one trick on that is just to know your FK score, yeah. uh, which you can usually look up in like, like Microsoft word or like the Hemingway apps, another popular way to check. And just yeah, if you don't know that that's flesh Kincaid score. It, it, yeah. it, it gives you the, the, the grade level at which you're writing. Yeah, exactly. And, and just keep that under like sixth grade, which is even less than really a newspaper article and uh, not try to like be clever or cute in trying to write with a distinctive voice. Like a lot of people like Gary Halbert's work and they like his newsletter and they try to emulate that and copy. But the funny part is if you actually read any of Gary's ads, like it's actually written in very simplistic conversational English. It doesn't have the same right. Uh, the same style he was writing for his newsletter because it was, he was writing to, to prospects, to customers. And yeah. Once he got the customers, he wrote to them in a very distinct way, but that was congruent with what he was trying to accomplish with his newsletter. When he wrote for clients, it was, uh, it's really hard to check those uh, FK scores because my, my PDFs are all old newspaper ads. And, <laughs> but I, I would guess they're probably like, sixth grade reading level if you check them out. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point that, because I hear that a lot. People say, you know, one copywriter said, how did I get great? I, I, I printed out and hand copied every single Gary Halbert letter. And I'm like, I, undoubtedly that will teach you a lot, but, yeah. but you're, but that's a good point that it's, it, he wasn't writing copy to persuade. He was delivering on a promise in a newsletter right. to give you information and insight into the industry. And that was a whole different voice than if he was going after the open market and making sure that nothing he wrote could possibly be misunderstood. Exactly. You know, if you have your own products you're selling, you might be able to develop a character in a, in a voice for yourself. Most of my writing I do is really ghostwriting. I write in the voice of somebody else. And it's just easier just to make sure that I'm, whatever I'm writing is just as clear and simplistic as possible. So that they, I can convey the exact ideas and emotions I want to convey without anyone being confused, skeptical, or bored, which are really the three ways of three paths to death and copy. Yeah. Yeah. I like skeptical better. What was the original cob was what, uh, un uh, confused, unbelievable and boring. Oh, unbelievable. Right. That's a good yeah. one too. But, but, but skeptical. Yeah. Same, same, same thing. Right. Yeah. I, mean, I can't quite make the word out of that, but like, that's really the, the key. <laughs> right. Right. Going through and making sure every single sentence is, you know, they're not skeptical and they're not bored mm. and they're not confused. Yeah. And that's where having a team alongside you to, to get that draft perfect ultimately is, is the key. And in copy chief, that's why we say nobody writes alone because yeah, it's on you to come up with ideas and recognize big ideas. That part of it might, might be a bit internal, but once the idea is approved, then it's time to take that idea and get it across to the reader sort of takes a team of people to make sure and, and peer review each other that everything's completely clear. Like you said, not inspiring skepticism and never being boring. Any of those three things for more than, you know, six seconds and you're dead. Yeah. And part of that is just having a process. That's really what we teach our, our copy cubs is most people sit down and they look at a blank piece of paper and they're like, they crack their knuckles and they hit the keyboard. They're like, I'm going to write a sales letter. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, what, what Joe Trefer has a great saying, which is think slow, write fast. So what we try to teach people is a process that they need to follow before they even get down to write their first draft. And it begins starting at the first step is just research and really understanding your customer, your customer avatar, mm -hmm. and then figuring out your big idea and then figuring out your offer and then figuring out your headline to lead. And then we have certain techniques we teach on how you can fill in the middle one of them, something called copyboarding, but whatever it is, you have some sort of outline and you know the the clothes already of the copy because you figured out the offer. So right. at that point, you know, you have it 50% done. <laughs> and then when you sit down and write, it's more filling in the blanks. So right. like a lot of people, that's a mistake they make is they go backwards. They have a first draft, they start writing and then they're like, wait a minute, what am I writing about? What's the big idea of this? And 
that's how you get really flaccid, confusing, boring, unbelievable copy is right. trying to attack it the, the wrong direction versus doing, which is really the hard work and the value add of following the process and really understanding what the customer really wants and then figuring out how you're going to get that to them. And then the best approach of reaching into his world. And then you start putting uh, words on paper. Yeah, that's so true. Hey, it's Kev here. And if you like this podcast, then you are going to love the Copy Chief app. Total, custom, easy to use, smooth phone app where you can listen to every podcast episode plus get all the show notes and dig it you can listen right inside the app even when your phone is in the locked position super cool plus right there in the same app you get access to all the great free copy chief content to help you write better higher converting copy plus members can access the private form area right from the mobile app it's available for you for free right now, wherever you get your apps, Apple, Android, go get it. Download the Copy Chief app today because nobody writes alone. I love when you say in the book, selling something is a creative act. Yeah. It, you know, it requires emotional risk and you can't learn that from a book. What do you mean by that? I have a, a mentor whose name's Wyatt Wood Small. He was actually the... Uh, same guy that originally coached Tony Robbins. And he really opened up my mind to the fact that there's a couple of different kinds of people out there. There's kind of what people and what if people. And Joe and I like to call them um, consumers versus creators. Mm -hmm. And the fact is like consumers will never get wealthy. You can never get rich by consuming. And that includes consuming copywriting books, courses, seminars, knowledge, all that by itself, those what things will not actually do anything for you. So you actually have to create things. You have to create ideas, create opportunities, create copy. And you certainly can use your knowledge and resources you've accumulated. But the only way to really make money, and that's really what the purpose of copywriting, the only purpose for it is to make money, <laughs> is you got to put some skin in the game. And that involves, again, like taking risk. And the fact that not everything you write is going to work. and and you need to be okay with that. Yeah, I think you mentioned this in a book and it's something I tell people is like, I think the, the moment you become a writer is when you crave the harsh critique. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that somebody's mean to you or, or makes you feel small or bats you around in front of others. It means that you're okay with it if it happens that way because all you care about is the end result, which is, right, and copy getting a result. And, you know, if you're delicate about your process and you're, you know, get all bent out of shape, if somebody doesn't love what you do, man, you know, that's like phase one of even exploring this craft, right? You got to get past yeah. that. I mean, most people crave certainty. And the problem is like certainty doesn't really exist. So your copy definitely has to project absolute certainty that you absolutely believe in this idea and believe in your offer and believe in the promises. But the fact is, like, it's it's uncertain. <laughs> That's what life is. It's uncertain that the, the customer is even going to believe you. And there's a very good chance that you're going to get rejected by customers. In fact, like, a good front-end promotion to one of our own house files is going to convert 5 to 6% at best, mm -hmm. which means that 94% of our entire list are going to reject that message and say no. So... That's hard for a lot of people. And like it sometimes seems like it's safer to hide behind a keyboard, but it, it's selling just like any other kind of selling. And uh, you're going to get rejected. You're going to reject a lot. And I've written my share of bombs. And I'll tell you what, you'll learn more about yourself as a copywriter mm. after a bomb than you even will after a big hit. That's the truth. That's the truth. You know, you talk about connecting with people and, and putting yourself out there. One thing you guys do that I love during copy school is you take your writers to the casino. Yeah. And you have your, your avatar is called Grandpa Kurt. Yep. And it's like, let's go meet Grandpa Kurt. And then you kind of encourage the writers to go up and uh, start conversations and have conversations with this, with this living, breathing avatar. Yeah. I mean, that's because at the end of the day, we have to remember we're selling to one person at a time. Now, hopefully we're selling to one person at a time, hundreds, maybe thousands of times, but your promotion is going to be read for one person. A real living, breathing human being is going to be reading your promotion and 
responding. They're either going to respond by uh, purchasing or they're going to respond by not purchasing. But it's easy to forget that. It's, it's easy to think you're writing to the void or to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> And at the end of the day, you are not the customer. The customer is the customer. And like, you know, like nobody has to read your shit is what we tell people at the, at the camp. You know, right. like, no one has to, they don't, they, there's no obligation on their part for them to give a shit about you or what you have to offer or what you're selling. Yeah. It's our job to make it relevant to them. So they actually are compelled to right. not only buy, but like for that to be like the highlight of their right. day. Yeah. Maybe the highlight of their week or even like the highlight of their life. Yeah. And that's really the the attitude you need to a, approach. And I call that ferociousness just because I think it's a nice mental picture to think of yourself like a, a puma or a cougar or a tiger or a lion or pick whatever big ferocious cat you want. But yeah. you don't want to be like a little putty cat either, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Right. Yeah. You can't be sipping milk. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and beating controls. Um, yeah. You know, because you, you, another thing you say in the book that I loved is, you know, look, it's, it's our, our job. It, we can't create desire. Desire already exists in people. Our job is to channel the existing desires into our big idea, into our headline, into our copy, and then into the offer. How do you, when you think about your avatar or, or who's on the other side of these words, this living, breathing human being that's going to read them, how do you know you're nailing those desires? Well, that's the thing. I, you really... You really don't until after the fact, um, but there's a lot of clues out there you can find. I mean, it's that's one great thing about financial publishing is like we have kind of an existing barometer that anyone can check, which is the financial markets. Yeah. So that'll give us right away a sense of how people are feeling. And that's really just like part of the reason why Agora as a whole and Agora Financial has had such great success, because I think that's just a, a unique advantage we have where we have a, a somewhat of a outside indicator to know people's feelings. But really, I mean, I think it's just whatever you need to do to crawl inside that person's head and life. And it requires a, a great deal of empathy to really realize that like the only reason why someone's buying what you had to sell is because in their, they're in a great deal of pain. They're in a great deal of pain, enough pain where whatever money that they need to give you <laughs> is enough for them to solve that pain. Yeah, you're like wallet doctors. Yeah. <laughs> in, the, in the back of the book, you've got a very clear set of action uh, steps. And we're talking to copywriters here. If you uh, want to be great, if you really want to go from B level to A level, step one, stop buying courses, stop chasing secrets, stop being an order taker. I love that. I tell, tell freelancers that all the time. Yeah. And instead, unleash the animal within to create multi million dollar breakthroughs. Then, you invite people to come partner with with you and with Joe Schriefer over there at Agora Financial. Yeah. And that means, you know, setting up a meeting. If if you see something you like in writers, you'll often fly them into Baltimore. Talk about the process of becoming an AF copywriter. Yeah. I mean, that's the biggest constraint we have in our business is talented copywriters who are, ha are extremely ambitious and want to be ferocious and want to get to that A-level top 1% level. So we're on the lookout for people like that. We'll make it real easy. We'll fly you out. We'll give you a complete tour of our business. We have a couple of things we'll ask. I mean, we'll ask that you are willing to move to Baltimore if you're a brand new writer, just because that's, in our experience, is the only way to really make sure we can give you the training and knowledge you need and resources and support you need to succeed. We want ferocious people. So uh, that's really what we're looking for. Yeah. We had 20 people come into an open house we did last year in August of 2018. And I hired five and uh, of that 20. And the reason why I didn't hire the other 15 was just that they were kind of lacking that. They didn't hmm. seem to really have a lot of... They weren't able to demonstrate their desire and ferociousness to us either in writing or in person. So, in fact, like, I'll just give you like a quick story. You know, we, we kind of put people on the spot within the first couple of minutes and gave them two minutes to prepare a one minute introduction of themselves to the whole group and to me and Joe. And it's amazing how many people bungled that when they were interviewing for a copywriting job. Like the way I would approach it would be like I'd write a I'd write a headline and write an ad for myself in that two minutes that I could deliver in one minute. And we weren't we weren't judging people on their public speaking skills at all. I mean, yeah. we're, it's a writing job. Yeah. So you can, 
you could easily write it out and just read it off the piece of paper and that would still uh, count. But we, we had people go like, oh, you know, I was born in this town and I went to this college and I have two dogs and you know, <laughs> I, I want to make a bunch of money. So that's why I'm here. And dude, you're trying out for a, a copywriting job, right? Like a headline and then tell me what's in it for me, me and Joe and Agora Financial. Right. That's really, and it's just funny how people can be, they can read all the books and study persuasion and study salesmanship, but then they, for whatever reason, it's just like, it's, it just doesn't congruent with their whole life. And really to be successful, ferocious copywriter, it's got to just permeate your yourself. I mean, right. I'm always persuading. Like right now, I'm trying to persuade you and your audience uh, on a, a, a lot of things. One of them is to get ferocious writing copy, but also the great opportunity we have at Agora Financial. And like, I'm always doing that all the time. And one of me and Joe's jobs at the, the copy school is just to persuade our copy cubs to move up a level in their career. Right, exactly. And I like that because it's it may not be the fairest test ever. Like I'm, I'm sure some people might bungle that and show you sparks in other places. Yeah. But it's a cool way to, if somebody nails that, you're like, ah, they got it, right? You know, that would be their instinct to introduce themselves a certain way that is that is persuasive. Yeah, yeah. In fact, there was a guy we did hire and he, his first line was like how he was dropping out of college to come move out to Baltimore to be a copywriter. So we might as well hire him anyway. <laughs> uh, really <laughs> pretty good headline. If you kind of put it out that way, yeah. you know, like how a student drops out of school to come work for a financial publisher in Baltimore. You know, that's yeah. Right. It's not bad. It's instantly intriguing. Yeah. Right. That's great. Well, Ryan, thanks for doing this, man. I, yeah. I love, I love the book. It's a short little read, but it's, I mean, there's no, not a word wasted, as you would imagine, from a, a top level copywriter like Ryan. So if you're interested, if this excites you, R McGrath, R M C G R A T H at agorafinancial.com. We'll also put that in the show notes at copychief.com forward slash CCR. Ryan McGrath, thank you, brother. I enjoyed it and I look forward to our next conversation. Yeah, man. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Copy Chief Radio. Copy Chief Radio.